Let's check out the tail of the tape in the opener. An extraordinary record right now for Juan Archuleta. Yeah, I just tell you, as you stare at this thing, even though both of these guys are batting over 90%, if you look at the accumulated fights between them, over 45 fights, Sean, that's a lot of experience. One of the biggest nights in Bellator history, one that ends with fortunes changed for many, begins as always with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bellator MMA Live on Paramount Network from Windstar World Casino and Resort. The action begins now with three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Brought to you by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. And now, first introducing the blue corner at five foot six, weighing in 142.6 pounds. In his return to the Bellator cage, he brings 21 professional victories, four defeats, fighting out of Chickasha, Oklahoma, Jeremy Spoon. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot nine, weighing in 145.6 pounds. Near perfect as a professional, he brings 20 wins, just one defeat. He fights out of Venice Beach, California. Introducing Juan the Spaniard Archuleta. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Kerry Hatley. Jeremy Spoon returns to the Bellator cage after six years away, fighting in the regionals. A big chance under the bright lights tonight, but that is one of the hottest fighters on the planet right now, Juan Archuleta. The fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Archuleta, just so unpredictable, but what I really feel his greatest asset is, is his ability to push that pace. He will come at you as hard in the last minute as he will in the first minute. That's something that's hard to explain to the audience. They can't totally see that. It's an intangible, but that is the difference maker in his young career. I often think of the starting line and the finish line. He wasn't this top super prospect. Great job by Spoon on the counter and the takedown. Maybe going a little too fast here, a little too much adrenaline from the veteran. But Juan Archuleta's improvement came in his 10th fight, his 12th fight, his 14th fight, when you sort of decide, am I going to make a commitment and go all in? And he did and put some great people around him. Yeah, that's right. And you could see that he was doing that in the training room and was transferring over. Listen, Spoon, OK, we, we've lost the position, but that was a very explosive technique. Maybe even a little bit better wrestling than I had anticipated from him. Archuleta looking to change fortunes here. If Archuleta's gonna have his hip, and, and right now they're hip to hip, he's not gonna be able to maintain this position. He wants to scoot all the way around to the back, so his hips are behind his opponents. Right now, Spoon is gonna have to either hand fight or he's gonna have to change his position there. Archuleta goes down, picks him up, lets gravity do the rest, and he's on top. Junior college national champion wrestler at Sacramento City College, then on to Purdue. Buddy Matt Mitrione. You mentioned TJ Dillashaw, Cub Swanson, Syed Awad, Zach Padilla, this is striking coach. That's a rough bunch of guys. Yeah, yeah and that, that's legit. That's a legit group right there. But what he went through the last time out, we showed you the highlights, and he was spectacular in his performance. What we didn't know as it was going on was that he had gotten word that his daughter, Fabiana, had passed out. And it turns out later, it turned out to be just a hot day, and she hadn't had enough to eat and drink. But talk about having something on your mind. You cannot have on your mind when you're going into that cage. Oh, thank goodness. I'm so happy to hear she's OK. Yes, that, that would be very terrifying. Now, this is the same position, Sean. Same position I was discussing with you a second ago. Archuleta's got his hips to the side. He's got to have them all the way behind, or he's going to lose the position. He's lost the position. But he fires off some jets. Good job by Spoon, too. We're sitting here talking about Archuleta, but Spoon is really putting up a good one. I mean, he missed by a mile with that left. Well, he succeeded in putting everything into the shot. That is true. He's learning sometimes that's more of an expression. Make sure you keep the balance. Good recovery, though, by Spoon. The full guard. You can't grab, you can't put your fingers between the fence. You can use it like a wall, but you can't grab it. 
Archuleta, he's just he's an interesting dude at a lot of levels. But he said, hey, Jeremy Spoon's a better wrestler than me. His jiu-jitsu's better than me. I mean, we, they surrounded an industry too, in which everybody, every fighter interview you ever do is, oh, I'm better than this guy and that. He's, I'm better than him and this. I'm better than <laughs> and Archuleta, it's almost reverse psychology. He goes the other way. Well, and look, you've got to be really aware of what you're getting into. And sure, some of that is a little reverse psychology, not meant for the opponent or for the fans, but for yourself. You want to take the pressure off of yourself. A lot has been put on Archuleta. You're guilty of that, quite frankly, Sean. You build okay. this guy. You know how good this guy is. And maybe it does make him a little bit nervous. But I'll tell you thus far, even though Archuleta is getting the jump, Spoon is matching him back. Spoon has had some very good moments here. And this could ultimately come down to a battle of conditioning. And if Spoon can hold up, we could have a very fun fight ahead of us. <laughs> Spoon, again, as you said, he's throwing himself into all these shots. You saw join the conversation. You guys all know how to hashtag by now. Bellator 210. Great control of those hips. Now Archuleta's behind him. If he can keep this angle, he can drag him down to the mat. He starts to come back out front, he's gonna lose the position. Jeremy Spoon said something interesting when we talk about some of the high-level fighters that Juan Archuleta is sparring with, training with, uh, trying to jump knee from that position. Jeremy Spoon's like, yeah, we don't have the same sort of coaching and that same sort of stuff here in Oklahoma, so we watch a lot of video. When I hear a guy say that, my thought bubble is, well, Maybe Oklahoma isn't where you should be. Then if the coaching isn't here, you gotta go find the coaching, and that's what the top guys do. Sure. No, that's a real thing. And there was a time in this sport where we did watch by video, but that was called the 90s. And not for nothing, but the sport has evolved enough, but you do have to get into one of those hot beds. Those VHS games. Stop, stop. VHS tapes. Well, so Jeremy Spoon comes out aggressive, but Archuleta holds controlling positions for much of the round. Kicking Corner in, cam brought to you by Boost Mobile. Oh, Easy right? to switch. Bring his head down Easy to say. Yes, that was beautiful though. Great round. Great round. Making a miss. Put him against the cage. Oh. A lot of firepower in your corner. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, TJ Dillashaw, Ooh. Mr. Positive too. That's nice to see. I like to be coached like that. I like the positivity. Light a fire under me in the practice room. In the ring, just blow some sunshine because that's, right, that, for me, that's man, what I like three. to see. Ready, Is it? Ready. I mean, the Go great on. coaches figure out how their athlete needs to be coached. If you have one style, one style fits all, doesn't work. That's right, each athlete can be different. Pretty easy call. Yeah, it certainly is for me. I, I really thought that Archer Leonard just had a little bit better output. I thought he even controlled some positions as it came to grappling. I had him 10, and I had Spoon 9. Archer Leonard's loan loss came three and a half years ago. Said it was his dad who motivated him. Said you got to work on your striking more. Got to work on your stand-up game. And he has not lost since. 15 consecutive wins. He's down to the regionals, king of the cage. He was a four-division champion, including at 135, which is the interesting element. If Archuleta is successful here and he wins his 16th straight fight, Patricio Pitbull is the featherweight world champion. Just defended his title in a great fight against Emmanuel Sanchez. The wild card here is the Bantamweight division. With so many of the top contenders getting injured, there may be world title opportunity earlier against Darian Caldwell at 135, and Archuleta can certainly make that weight. I like that match he just did. Yes, he certainly could make that. Good scramble there by Spoon. Spoon is just a step behind in this whole fight. Archuleta keeps finding this exact same position. Hip to hip here, or belly to belly, but with him having the underhooks. Spoon has got to start beating him in these spots. He can do that by digging in, doing what we call pummeling, but he's got to start getting those underhooks himself. If Archuleta can stay here and eat up time, it's going to just stop Spoon from being uh, able to get any activity, any offense up. Right now, it would be a good opportunity. Spoon needs to take control of this fight and go first. Archuleta, every time there's an option, who's going to go first? Every time the answer has been Archuleta. Archuleta looking like a very confident fighter these days. And he's growing into the race, growing into the wreck. That's what's happening. Don't do the body work on the clinch, which is a little unusual. Good jab. Yep. He might have hurt. I think he, he did. On the nose, he did. He? Archuleta senses the opportunity now. Something happened there. I'm thinking that Archuleta might have broke. Spoon's nose, he certainly did some damage to it. 
Spoon almost eager. Spoon turning. The, the left started it, and Archuleta on the verge of finishing it here. Spoon defending himself, but he's not moving. The veteran staying alive for now. Great look at it from the overhead. Good underhook there by Spoon. This might get him back to his feet if he wants it. He all, seems almost complacent to stay down in this position, which largely he took himself to. He, he largely sat down and conceded the spot, which made me wonder what exactly happened there. I think it was a short left in there that clipped Spoon and stunned him. And Archuleta gave him no time to recover. All right, Spoon back into the fight. Yeah, it was the left. Our producer is in my ear. He rewatched it in the truck, said it was the left hand, and Archer Leonard jumps right back on. This is what I'm talking about, Sean. In these, right here, in these moments, somebody has to go first, and whoever goes first is in control. Archuleta takes that spot every time. He's making Spoon react to him. Here's another moment to reset the fight, and Archuleta again goes first. Spoon tries the level change. Archuleta easily spins out. High energy fight. Love it. Another opportunity to reset. The right clip, Jeremy Spoon. The fight isn't one big long contest. It's a whole bunch of small moments. Right here is a new moment. Archuleta has two different speeds. Sometimes Sean, he's just touching a bubble boom, and sometimes he explodes. Fighters that fight like that, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, they're very hard to get a read on. It's a, it takes a lot of skill to get there, but I like how Archuleta can go from fast to super fast, from medium to fast. Two different speeds make Spoon have to deal with two different opponents. The greatest pitchers aren't the ones that throw the hardest. They're the ones who have the biggest difference in speed between their pitches, and it makes them deceptive. Uh, the evolution of Juan Archuleta the last couple of years has been something. Yeah, Jeremy Spoon, he's just struggling to stay on his feet at this point. Saw some big time performances. If you're just joining us on Paramount in our prelim, uh, one of the deepest, the deepest in Bellator history. And Juan Archuleta putting on a great show and a dominant round number two. Full marks for Jeremy Spoon just to survive. Easy up, man. Stop. Watch this, it's that left hand that's hurting him. Spoon right, keeps go, on man. taking it. Archuleta's setting Still everything work. up with the jab and they're just getting through, landing right on the nose. Very painful spot, very sensitive spot to be punched. So full marks for the veteran here, Jeremy Spoon. You don't get to be 21 and four unless you've survived adversity, which he has throughout his career. Yeah, I've got no problem with the effort in Spoon. I would just correct one thing, which is to go first. In moments like this, steal the moment. The moments add up into minutes, which add up into rounds, which add up to the contest. We have a new moment right here. They're separated, they're stalking each other. Somebody is gonna go first. And this time it's Spoon. Another big shot from Archuleta. Bellator stands with those affected by the fires in California. Home of Juan Archuleta now. And you can support those impacted. Visit musicforrelief.org backslash fire. Images that just boggle the mind when you stare at them, especially in the stage of videos. Anything you can do to help. They're doing a very good job with some kicks. Oh, there, Archuleta caught him again. It's amazing how the percentage of these shots that are getting through. Spoon, as he comes to the collars, he's just trying to pull Archuleta's neck down. What that is doing, it's not an offense, it's not even to set up a submission. It's to just create a lack of separation so that the ground and pound of Archuleta will be less. If Archuleta can get his chest off his opponent, start to elevate his head, that's where the real power of these shots can come. Right here, big, powerful shots from Archuleta. Steps over a little north-south here along the fence. Sneak right arm under, considering the options here. Jeremy Spoon's defending himself on the ground. There were a couple of real fight ending moments in that second round. Oh, Spoon won't go away. Spoon's no quitter. He, he's been given that opportunity several times tonight. He's passed on them all. Spoon's here to fight. 
Kim Lee using natural bantamweight, fighting up. You saw the tail of tape, they came in at 142. He didn't cut at all. And now it looks like that left hand of Spoon is bothering him. Nice. <laughs> Archuleta gassed a little bit now for the first time. He has been the aggressor. I think he caught Spoon with a body he shot there. Yes, yeah, Spoon bent over. A body kick. But he thought twice about it. Thought, no, I'm going to do a little more. This is the thing with Archuleta. I mean, he's just so dynamic. We talk about his corner. We talk about Cub Swanson and TJ Dillashaw. But they're fine examples, right? The nut doesn't fall far from the tree. What those guys do so well and what Archuleta has stolen from is he'll kick you in the leg to set up a punch to the head. He'll lock around your body to set up a double leg takedown. He's just constantly making you guess. He's constantly annoying you, bothering you, and putting you on the defense. When you're on the defense, you don't have to worry about the guy beating you. If you can keep him defensive the whole time, his offense is shut down. What's interesting is that when you talk to people about Archuleta, they describe him as a brilliant chain wrestler, and he's becoming a chain MMA fighter that way. Almost the same mindset. The work ethic, though, the hours that go into the gym in preparation to have this level of fitness, this level of cardio and ability to push, really is something that a guy like Archuleta deserves credit for. This is a disciplined, focused, hungry athlete. Three things that Scott Coker loves to see. Multi-dimensional in his game and multi-dimensional, as we said, in terms of his weight class, which could open up some opportunities sooner rather than later. Take that with you after we pick the clinch here. Spoon did everything Whoa. right. Spoon did everything right there, but Archuleta threw a punch on the way out and hurt him. Archuleta, he is not content. This is going to be a dominant, easy victory, but he's going for the finish here in the last 30 seconds. You bring up Darian Caldwell. You talk about Pitbull. If they are at home and watching this and knowing what could well be in their near future, in their 2019, I assure you they are not worried about the punches and the kicks and the wrestling. They're talking and focusing on this level of output. It is the intangible. It is something you cannot prepare for, and it is very intimidating by Archuleta. One-way traffic. Right here, look at these body shots. He's just ripping to the body to come right back upstairs. Hits Spoon, fakes him, comes right down. Boom, boom to each side. Then he comes right back up top. Look at this body shot, just chopping him down. Chopping him down just like a tree. A lot of, a lot of little bites all night long. Juan Archuleta about to go to 21 and one. We'll make it official when we return. Impressive performance for Juan Archuleta, just the latest in a series against the veteran here, Jeremy Spoon. Michael C. Williams will make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Dan Matisse, scores the fight 30 to 25. Well, judges Jacob Montalvo and Don Turnage both see the fight the same 30 to 26. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Juan the Spaniard. 16 straight wins, 21 and 1. Juan Archuleta closing in to the top of maybe two divisions. And he is standing by with Chael Sonnen. I'm here with the winner. Congratulations, Juan Archuleta. Juan, I got to ask you a personal question. What else do you need to do to get a title shot? I'm telling you, man, I'm on the road to El Dorado right now in the, the golden side. It's in my blood. I'm a conquistador. Spanish blood in me. We don't stop until we conquer every division, every gold we see. It's in our sight, and we're on the road to El Dorado, Chael. I think we will leave it at that. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Juan Archuleta. Featherweight, Bantamweight, you name it, Juan Archuleta is down, and he is rolling right now with 16 consecutive wins.